Um, I mean, it's commendable for the gift of the givers to, to, to try and um, assist um, with regards to this case whereby, of course, um, Mr. Gorki is, is, is held hostage right now in Yemen and, of course, they've, they've secured a safe um, release of the wife, um, Yolandi. Um, but do you think they sort of crossed the line? Do you think it was their role to, to, to play this role specifically? Well, if you're in a desperate situation like that, then you're going to reach out to anybody who has credibility to help you negotiate some kind of a release, not necessarily play, uh, pay ransom money. And Gift of the Givers is quite a unique organization. Uh, if you look into them, you will see that they uh, have provided uh, support in 41 different countries across Africa and in the Middle East. And as we know from the news, they are very fast to react to a humanitarian crisis or any other kind of crisis. You know, Often they are the first South Africans on the scene providing support and assistance, which means it's a unique organization, very well run, uh, and it has um, entree or access to decision makers on the ground. Now, in a situation like Yemen, it's a bit like in the Horn of Africa, that part of Africa and the Middle East uh, is very unstable. Uh, I suppose one can talk of Yemen almost, uh, it's a fragile state or a failed or a failing state. So there are not clear lines of authority. Who do you talk to when somebody, and in the case of the Corkies, I mean, you know, teachers <laughs> doing good work. Mm. Who on earth do you contact and who do you talk to to enable there to secure their release? Now, it seems to me that uh, this is the game that uh, is being played in that part of the world where you are, if you're white, <laughs> Uh, people presume you have money, uh, or you come from a big organization, and so you're caught, and uh, it's all about money. Um, and it happens in, uh, in Somalia as well. Um, and negotiations happen all the time. Yeah. And people are released when money is paid. Now, no, just sorry to interrupt you, mm. but speaking of negotiations, what are the chances that um, the involvement of the gift of the givers might be setting a precedent um, for, for, for hostage negotiations? Well, there's, well, okay, I think the gift of the givers should do humanitarian assistance. It's what they are known for, and it's what they are good. And they, they gather South Africans around the cause, which they... Now, to cross the line into political negotiations, mm. is a, it's, they're on thin ice. Because people say, what if they are successful today, uh, another team, another two teachers or humanitarian aid workers get caught and then the whole process starts again. Sort of it, can, it can sort of uh, a chain reaction. So th there is a danger. But I think in this particular case, South Africans are not known for uh, parachuting in like the Americans or the, Amer or the Europeans do uh, with lots of support and lots of backup. Uh, so it's, it's South Africans go for genuine humanitarian reasons. And I think for this reason, and because Gift of the Givers has credibility, they engaged in a, in a process of negotiation with what appeared to be Al-Qaeda mm -hmm. in Yemen to secure the release. They were successful halfway through. Now, whether or not uh, the husband gets released mm -hmm. is unclear. But I think in this particular case, they've paved the way for the South African government in the form of Deputy Minister Ibrahim. Yeah. Uh, to go to Yemen. South Africa has relationships with Yemen. And so there is a good relationship that can be explored or exploited yeah. to secure the release of the outstanding hostage, which is uh, Mr. Korki. And speaking of government, of course, they mm. have mentioned that they will intervene. And they have intervened, of course, in the presence of the Deputy Minister of International Relations. Yeah. Um, but they did made, make it clear that they will not pay any ransom money. No, but, so what is the role of government then in this regard, the specific roles that we can expect from government moving forward? Yeah, because this might happen again. Yeah. Look, governments the world over say, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Because if you break that rule, ostensibly, openly, then uh, terrorists or radicals will say, okay, this is good, we're going to take another couple hostage and ask Absolutely. for more money, and then the ball rolls, and how do you, it's, you, know, yeah. how do you stop this? So I, th I think Mr. Ibrahim's role in, he's probably there now as we speak, uh, will be to talk to his counterparts in government to the extent that there is a government in Yemen mm. to see if there is not a political way out of this impasse. And so we are using our diplomatic skills and our standing in Africa as a democratic country mm -hmm. uh, to try and secure the release.
I don't think that the South African government should ever pay ransom money uh, to, to hostage takers no. because it will open the door for, uh, for an uncontrollable uh, escalation of the situation. But speaking yes. of ransom money, um, mm. it's been reported widely that, of course, we do know government will not be involved as far as ransom money is concerned, but the family has raised 90,000 US dollars thus far and is still appealing to the public mm. um, through an SMS line to contribute towards raising the money. Yeah. How wise is it, do you think, to involve uh, uh, people, to involve ordinary citizens, to involve perhaps even the world, to contribute towards ransom money in hope of freeing, of course, Pia Gorki? Yeah, look, I must say to me, this is a, it's a tragic story. It touches the hearts of almost everybody, mm -hmm. and people will want, to, will want to contribute to this cause. But this is not going to secure the release of Mr. Corky. They want three million. They'll negotiate. They'll probably go down to one million US dollars. That's three million rand. Mm -hmm. It's still too much. Yeah. And this is, this, it's an untenable situation. So the goodwill is there. People want to contribute to help the situation to be resolved. But this is not the game uh, really to be played. Uh, this is not an oil company, you know, on the, on the uh, Horn of Africa where the ship gets caught up and you can pay a couple of million to have the guys released, uh, the captain of the ship. People make movies about this. Yeah. We, can't, we can't do this. So although the intention is good, uh, that money should be saved, maybe for, uh, for another good cause. But in this case of Mr. Corky, uh, uh, I would put my faith in Mr. Ibrahim, who knows the region quite well, mm -hmm. to make some kind of a political deal. Uh, and of course, gift of the givers behind the scenes, working as a non-governmental organization, might just be successful in getting the husband released. Because after blood, sweat and tears, they got the woman released. I think her name is Yolandi. Yes, it is. Yes, and she tells the story and the gift of the givers tell the story of how difficult it was. Yeah. 24 hours, day and night, getting... Mm -hmm. They at some point asked for 15,000 US dollars mm -hmm. uh, and the guy said, no, we want her for free. Oh. So there's still a chance that he gets released. But the important point for me is that once our government gives in and it becomes known to be paying money, for, for ransom. Yeah. Then the door opens to similar cases in the future. We simply can't afford that. All right. Thank you so much, Professor Ntwani Fanikarik, the Director of the Center for Defense and Security Management. Thank you so much. Pleasure.